Good morning, everybody. Um, um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you to everyone who has been keeping me in their prayers and giving me such nice words of encouragement. Also, I'd like to shout out to all my Beamley fam, Miss Barbara Jean, um, PB3 Kids, um, Honey Boo Boo, and just everyone who has given me, was telling me that they're praying for me. And I just want to say thank you so much to all my Beamley fam and friends. You guys are not only like my friends, you guys are like a part of my family now. And I just wanted to say thank you for all your words of encouragement and Thank you for praying for me and asking God to help heal my heart. Also to my subscribers, thank you guys so much for praying for me and giving me such nice words of encouragement. Um, I'm doing a little better. I still feel numb. I just feel really numb and like painless. Because I know I asked God to heal my uncle. And I know that's what God did. He helped him. He had to take him to heaven to help him. And I understand because I asked God to do it. But I guess it just hurts because I loved I loved him. And I still love my uncle because I know he's no longer sick. And I know that he's no longer in pain. And I just want to say thank you for everyone who's praying for me and my family. And just thank you so much. I ask that you guys continue to pray for me and my grandma. Because I just feel like um, just continue to keep praying for me and my grandmother. Because I feel like we're take, I'm worried about her because... I love my grandma, and I don't want nothing to happen to her, so I just pray that God continues to help heal my heart and continue to help take this numbness away, and that he continues to just heal me and my grandmother's heart and help us, help us kind of get, not just help us get through this time. So just thank you to everyone who's been praying for me. I really appreciate it. And I love you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. And just thank you. Um, let's just jump right into it. Um, first, let's talk about the haves and the have-nots. Um, Amanda, like, what was that all about? Um, she's calling Quincy. Quincy, her new boyfriend, and Candace and Jeffrey are finally back, which I'm excited because I knew Jeffrey was really worried about Candace, and um, so I'm happy about that. Last night, that last night it made me laugh, and I needed that because I just needed to laugh, and um, so last night I kind of laughed a little bit, and I really needed that. Because last night I just felt like a zombie. I still feel like a zombie today. I just feel like I'm just going going with the motions. Like I'm just, I feel like I'm going, but I can't feel nothing. If that makes any sense, it's like I'm just going because I know I have to go throughout the day. So, yeah. But um, I'm still excited about BTU. Because I know that when God, the best time to praise God is when you're going through things, going through heartaches and pain. So I'm excited. I'm still excited about going to BTU. I'm still excited about learning more about God. And who knows, I might have someone who can help me get through this hurt and this pain. But um, back to the has and have nots. But um. Candace, I, my mom was saying that she doesn't think that Candace's baby is dead. I think it is because, remember, she said Quincy was a murderer. He killed somebody. And I really think that he killed the baby. Not, and I feel like that's what happened. 
And I don't think she would say that, but I feel like that's what happened. Quincy killed him. And last night was just really often. Last night with them when she was asking that he was, you know, and Benny was saying, is that why you here all hide up and all this stuff and Hannah and all this. I'm hoping that when she comes clean, that this can somehow make pull her and Hannah together instead of apart. Because she might can say what happened and, you know. But, yeah. So, that was the haves and have-nots, of course. It's more of the haves and have-nots. But, last night, I was just looking at TV. Just to, I was just looking. So, if I missed anything, I do apologize. But, um, you know, it was just a lot going on. So, then I watched, after I watched The Haves and the Have Nots, I also watched Finding Carter, which I love. I'm going to be so sad that um, I'm going to miss next week. So when I come back home, I'll probably catch it on demand and all that stuff. But um, yeah, Finding Carter last night was off. It was like, like oh my God. So what happened was Carter was going to the police station to apologize because Elizabeth, who was her birth mom, made her apologize for the prank that she pulled at the mall. So as she's apologizing and all this stuff, she finds one cop, and I'm guessing he's helping her find her, her mom, who she thought was her mom for 13 years, but was her abductor. The abductor. Did that come out right? The abductor? The abductor. The person who abducted, the person who took her. So she was asking questions about that, and um, she met this guy while she was there. His name was Cash Crash, I think. So basically, what happened was she, her mom told her that basically she had a curfew. She had to be in at ten. Elizabeth. So she's out with her the group of the friends that she found. So she comes home, and when she comes home, she brings her friends over. Now, the dad and everything is cool with it, you know. So, basically what happened is the guy, Cash, Crash, Cash, Crash, whatever his name, Cash, I think was his name. Um, So he's sitting in the thing teaching her little brother how to roll a joint. And the dad, her dad... Throws him out and her mom, Elizabeth, who she calls Elizabeth, says she doesn't want her to see him. So, of course, because all this is new to her, she doesn't really know who, she doesn't really even want to know who Elizabeth, she doesn't even care what her mom says. So she kisses this guy and then walks off. Long story short, she gets in the car with him and apparently he's killed people. He has... Like a rap sheet that's like out of this world. And so he's driving. He stole the car with her in the car. So she actually gets, he's like speeding like really, really fast. She actually gets out the car. He drops her off and keeps going. So when she gets in the car with her dad. Now, I really like the dad and her relationship. Like I feel like out of the whole house, the dad and the brother are not trying to rush her into it and I understand that Elizabeth who plays her mom Elizabeth that's what she calls her Elizabeth and my thing with Elizabeth is she she's been missing for 13 years and then now that she has her back it's like she wants her to at first she was just trying to you know keep her but she's also scared that the person who abducted her is going to come and take her again. So, it's a lot going on with her. And then on top of that, she's having an affair. And it's just crazy. So, anyways, back to what I was, you know. So, basically, she gets in the car and her sister, her twin sister, likes her ex-boyfriend who was staying at the house. So... But her twin sister is kind of jealous of her because I guess, because I'm guessing after she got taken away, her mom really was kind of like really protective over the 
her twin sister because she was so scared that something was going to happen again. So, the twin sister is kind of jealous because Carla basically can do what she wants and everyone's kind of letting her, you know. But, yeah, so she gets in the car, the guy drops her off. So, as her and her dad are driving the car, they have this hug at the end. And while they're hugging, she calls him dad. And that's the first time she's ever called him dad. And as she's in the car, she was saying she was so sorry. And if Elizabeth fusses at her, she deserves it. How stupid can she be? And the dad was basically telling her, don't worry. This will be our little secret. You know, I won't tell. She's not at home. It'll just be between me and you. So as they're hugging, her, the lady who took her sees them. So next Tuesday, I will miss them because I'll be at BCU. So... Yeah, but um, other than that, that's my review. And just once again, thank you everyone who was praying for me and just keeping me up and praying to God that he heals my heart and helps me get through this time. And I just want to say thank you so much to all my Beamley fam, Miss Barbara Jean, um, Honey Boo Boo 87, PP3 Kids. I love you guys so much. Just thank you so much for your words and encouragement and your prayers. It really means a lot to me. And just thank you. I ask that you guys just continue to help pray for me and my grandmother. And that you just ask God to continue to heal us and to continue to help us get through this process. To help continue us get through this in our time of needs because I know it's going to be hard. And just thank you. As always, all you need in life is love, peace, and happiness. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I love you guys. Peace, kisses.